if you've made it this far, congratulations. You are an actual web designer. All right. So one thing we can change on our, our title here is we can say, we can put a dash here or the pipe. Um, that pipe is below the backspace button on your keyboard. And then we say log in so that uh, someone can easily see in the title here that we are on the login page. Okay. I think uh, that's about it for the login page. So now what we want to do is create the sign up page. Now, since we have this page already, it's going to be very easy. So what we do here, we are going to save as. So let me go and say file, save as. And we have login.php. Then now we have signup.php and then save. Okay. So now that we have saved, even here, we have to load another page. So if I refresh this, it's still refreshing the login page. So we have to go to our folder right here. And then we drag and drop the sign up page. Sign up. Boop. Okay, so now we're on the sign up page. It says sign up right there. Now, if we go to this part, let me go to the uh, top here and change this to sign up. Sign up. Okay. So that we can see the difference when I refresh, it says sign up. Even here, let's change this to sign up. So there we are going down here and my book. Oh yeah, this part which says sign up is actually the button here because if the user is not logging in, they'll click on sign up instead. But here, if they're on the sign up, they have to click here to go to the login in case they want to log in. So we'll change this part to log in and then we'll go down here and say sign up. Sign up to refresh. So sign up to my book. And so what we need from the user to sign up. First of all, we need them to retype the password. That's one important thing. So let me go down here. Now, if you're using Sublime Text and you click on, the, on a line, without selecting anything, don't click and drag, just click. If you press Control Shift D, it's going to duplicate that line. If you're using Notepad++, you just press Control D, I think. So you see the type is password as well. Everything is the same unless the placeholder, let's give it another name called re, retype, I think that's what it is, retype password capital R. So let's go back here and do that. And we see there, retype password, password, retype password. Then we also want the user to give us um, their name. Okay, so let's go up here. Let me separate these like this and control shift D. So the type is still text, the ID is still text, but the placeholder we change, this one is going to be first name. Okay, and then here we'll put last name. Hmm. Then we have email, first name, last name. Let's see what we have so far. And that's much better. So sign up, first name, last name. Uh, we have the email. But we want also the user to tell us whether they are male or female. So we could put that right here. Uh, gender. Okay, male or female. So now, in order to create the gender input, <clears throat> because we don't want them to actually type the gender like male or female, because they might end up typing something that uh, we cannot accept, information that we can't accept. For example, they might type dog or lion in there, and that would be unacceptable data because we want to either have male or female. 
So in order to do that, we create another input type called select for the user to actually select. So here, first of all, let me write the name gender. So they know it's gender they are looking for. Okay. Now remember that living spaces here doesn't really leave spaces here. So if I do this, I'm going to see that, which is uh, not exactly what we want. So what I should do is put a break tag here. All right? Mm -hmm. Like that. Okay. But we want another control down here after gender. So let me go down here and say, uh, let me duplicate this input. Actually, I don't need to duplicate because this input type is a little bit different. It's called select. So let's do that. Select, and then it will have an opening and a closing. Okay. So now inside the select here, if, for example, I just refresh right now, I'm going to see the select is there. This is where you click and some options come down here. So it doesn't look exactly like what I want. So let me give it an ID of text so that it also gets the same styles as the other friends. Okay, so let me refresh and you see it there. This looks much better. So now let me put a gap here between these two. So by doing, by using a break tag like this one here. So let me put some break tags. I can put them here. There we go. So we have first name, last name, gender, email. Now we don't have any options. So let's try and add some options in that gender. So the way we add options, surprise, surprise, we use the word options. Option, like that, just one option. And then we close the option, something like so. So all you have to do is duplicate these to have more options. So you can have either male, and then we put female in there. That's it. That's how we make our options. So if now I click this male, this female. See? That's very neat. All right. So this is uh, good for the user that is signing up. Oh, something I forgot. Uh, this button should be sign up and not log in down here. So let's go down here and change it. Let's change the value to sign up. Like that since we are signing up the user so there we go sign up that looks much better and this one I don't want it to have the bold just like this one this is a title this is just gender so what we could do is remove the bold thing here or we can simply uh, edit this guy by himself so what we could do here is go to gender here and then let's just add this guy inside a div now, there's another um, thing, instead of using div, we can use something better. Because div leaves uh, a gap like there. You've seen that gap because the div is quite big. So we can use another one called span. Now, span is just a container as well, uh, just like div. The only difference is it doesn't go all the way. Uh, it's not a block by default. So it's just a way to contain some text inside and add some extra uh, styles to it. So here in this span, I can simply add a style right there and say font weight normal. I don't know if it's normal or regular, but let's see if that actually works. Okay, so it works. Then if we want, we can have it float this way or add some padding so that it's some, somewhere here. But the problem is if I float it to the left, it's going to go all the way there, which is not what I want. So for now, uh, in the interest of keeping the tutorial simple, I'm just going to leave it as it is. We can restyle these things later as needed. All right, so I'll see you in another video. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and everything else. See you next time.